It's a Tuesday edition here on Zero Block 30, and today we have five rounds in the magazine. Round number one, it is with heavy heart that we announce that a Humvee has been stolen. If you lost your Humvee, what's the fair punishment? And what would you do with that bad boy? We took to our social media channels to ask you all of that. Round number two, the message from the Puerto Rican commander of the National Guard unit that is going to Washington, D.C. was beyond motivating. If you want to be inspired, just stick around for round number two. Round number three, school circle on us. We're going to answer some more of your questions that the beloved troops have. Could be good advice. Could be bad advice. We'll just have to see, I guess. It'll probably be bad, though. Honestly, it's just the fact that this is going to be pretty bad advice today. Round number four, big balls or flaps of the week Thank goes you. to our Russian pal who was poisoned a few months ago. This dude's an absolute lunatic and made his way back to Russia. If I was that guy and I know that you poisoned me, I videoed you talking about poison me and unveiled the plot of how you poisoned me. I don't think I ever go back to Russia. No matter how much I love like pierogies and shit. I'm just not going yeah. back. Cause you almost think like, well, they can't kill me now that this is all out there, but, but Russia will just be like, all right, fine. We'll just oh, he, openly he kill you now. Out that same hospital window that makes <laughs> yeah. four people that have fallen out that same window. Maybe we should put a screen on it. Uh, round number five, and a story that could be the poster child of good initiative but bad judgment. A former army soldier, looking at you, Cons, these are your people, was arrested for inciting violence in checks notes. No, this this can't be. It's in Tallahassee. I mean, <laughs> what's going on? In, uh, Tallahassee is one of those state capitals where you're like, why? Tallahassee why is, is the capital? Of all the other cities in Florida that you could have that could be the capital, you have Pensacola, Panama City, Jacksonville, Orlando, Tampa, Miami, and you went with Tallahassee. <laughs> Sounds old, like a really old really Tallahassee. Tallahassee. Have you ever been to Tallahassee? No. Why? No. It's fucking terrible. It is one of the worst cities in the country. Legitimately awful. Yeah. All right, but you know it's not awful. Our friends at Three Chi. That's who the show is presented by today. Three Chi is the industry leader in Delta 8 THC products. All products are formulated by a biochemist and made here in the USA with USA grown hemp. Three cheese Delta 8 is federally legal version of THC and more func uh, functionally alternative to marijuana. And if you take it, you might fire off some weird tweets at night. I gotta be honest with you, you might. That's where I came up with the idea of babies having poop blood, um, which I think still is true. Kate, you actually are a believer in baby poop blood, right? No, not at all. Uh, oh. Pee. <laughs> we, they, they don't poop until after they're born. They're very polite, but they do pee in there like all day long. Oh, so Kate has pee blood. Yes. Um, which is pretty sweet. The only person on the show ever to have pee blood, which is pretty incredible. Take a brag. <laughs> uh, CBD is not psychoactive but it'll give you a buzz so please use it responsibility don't drive or anything while you're using it go to 3chi.com enter the promo code zbt2021 to receive five percent off at checkout you're gonna love this stuff it's awesome get the gummies and the vapes that's what i have i really enjoy it but they also have like the tentacles that you can put into brownies or cookies or whatever give it a little at the end of the day i love it uh, make sure you give it a try let's get started with the show Big news of the weekend. Old Catherine putting together a, a table. I got to say, Kate, when I see you doing all this stuff, I'm like, why doesn't she just wait until Pat gets there so he can help her? That's I'm so a... sexist. <laughs> no, it's like putting things together by yourself is difficult. And no, I've been lugging boxes, well, like 70 to well over like 100 pounds. I've been like plopping them in wagons and dragging them upstairs. And like, yeah, no, I'm an idiot. But I'm also very instant gratification. I always have been. Um, it's like, so I'm just like the box arrives and I'm, I have to put it together tomorrow. Like any stuff that's arriving for the baby now, it's put together and it's ready to go. Yeah, so. Kyle was always surprised whenever I would get a new tool, just let it sit in my garage for like a month. Yeah. Well, chaps, you sent me a stroller of this great stroller that attaches and blah, blah. The tech guys at the office were like, our gift to you is we're putting it together. And I'm like, sick, do it now. I'm going to take it for a spin around the office. Like I can't, nice. I need that it is once a good present for them to put it together. Good job. On them. I know super nice of them. But like once something arrives, I, I have to have it ready. I have to have it now. And so, yeah, good for me, Katie, long time Thule, setting up the table last night, but Couple of the couple right of the legs. Very eyes, unbelievable. 
Yeah. Um, let's get going with round one. This story came whenever it comes when a story like this happens. This is one where we get tagged in all the time because people know that this is the kind of story we love. This is just Junior Troop goofing, just stealing a little bit of a Humvee out in California. And I think that Humvees might be the biggest, like, you know, we talk about bridging the civilian and military divide. Mm. This might be the biggest divide where civilians look at a Humvee and they're like, holy shit, that thing looks beefy and badass. And military people are like, that thing fucking sucks. Yeah. Nobody wants to ride in a Humvee at all. No, yeah. they, terrible turning radius, no power steering, typically always broken in some way, some form or fashion. It's no just terrible. Heat. comfortable thing ever, too. Like when you have to wear those. Yeah. Eat, like if you put on like a flak that has plates on it or something, you would think that they would design them in a way that it would be even just remotely comfortable, like tolerable. But the way that the seats are, it hits your plates and puts it like right directly into your spine. I'm a firm believer that that's the reason why almost everybody has back issues. It's yeah. simply because of the Humvee. Not to mention, unless you're five foot five, that thing's just not comfortable. That's There's what no I always room. thought with uh, Alejandro Villanueva riding around in yeah. one of those motherfuckers and being six nine. Yeah. I <laughs> never understood how big, how tall are people handled that because I'm five nine and I after like because we would do the three hour when you were training to get your Humvee license you had to do those long drives and I'm like if I have to sit squished in here for another second I'm gonna fucking scream and then the person next to me is like six four and I'm like well mm. never mind oh, my bad Dude, uh, when we used to go <laughs> places and you know like when you're outside the wire sometimes there'll be like uh an ID will be found and so all the traffic on this on a main highway when you're deployed will be shut down where you can't move anywhere i used to have to do that with being like on the bigger side at the time and have an 80 pound dog in my lap it was fucking miserable and like the dogs would be pissed sometimes like in between imagine being a gunner and in the turret and not knowing the dog really at all and having an attack dog between your legs and you might have to fire off a 240 or a 50 cal. No yeah, man, I, I'd imagine you don't have to worry about them too much, right? Like when they're, they're moving around back there. Well, I mean, there's no room like, you know, like in the back, cause you all, if you have a dog, you have to sit in the back and there's no room cause you always have it loaded down with shit with extra rounds with MREs with whatever you need, like supplies. So there was never really a lot of room for Psyche to move around. You understand as a person when you're going through and like traffic is stopped, what's happening. They're looking for an ID. Mm. Psyche has no idea what they're doing. He's just like, why the fuck are we sitting here? It's yeah. hot. There's no air conditioning. Let's get out and walk. Let's go play. Let's do mm. something. And also one of the age old jokes in the military that gets so old after a while, there's a couple, but one, go get me a box of grid squares. And if you're a junior troop and you're like, well, oh my God, I don't know what that is. I don't know where to find that. And two, go get me the Humvee keys. What's mm -hmm. the problem with that gentlemen? Why won't you ever find the Humvee keys? Well, it's because it's like a Tesla. There is no key. There are yeah, no, no keys. keys. And so you don't need any time you are driving on the highway as a civilian, whatever, and you pass a military base or a reserve base. Usually there's reserve bases right next to the highway. You see rows and rows of Humvees. They're not locked. You can just get right into one, flip the little switch and you are cruising. And that is exactly what happened over the weekend. Uh, the FBI is asking for the public's help finding a Humvee stolen Friday morning from the California Army National Guard. I feel like California is the place. If you want to steal a tank or a Humvee or something and you want to go cruising, California seems to be the it spot for such activity. And I Why? Don't think they care. I don't, yeah, I don't think they care. I think there's something about cruising through palm trees in a stolen vehicle, going down a palm tree line street in a stolen vehicle that's just so Grand Theft Auto that just feels right. Um, the vehicle is attached to A Company 40th Brigade Support Battalion. It was stolen from a National Art Garment in Bell, California. Besides being painted green and camouflaged, the vehicle has all sorts of official ID, bumper number, if you're out there, Bolo, 40 Bravo Sugar. Bravo, ha ha, ha H, uh, question six, registration number, Nebu nebulizer, zoo, 311, rodeo, and a sticker under the right front headlight that reads 40th BSB, Backstreet Boy. We went to the press as quick as we could, hoping someone would recognize it, said Laura I. Miller, a spokesperson for the FBI in LA. 
And as someone who put it on Twitter, identifiers also include being a literal military vehicle <laughs> driven by a guy who looks like he would literally steal a military vehicle. <laughs> The Humvee's notable characteristics extend beyond color. The vehicle is up armored as the military puts things, making it more resistant to attack. And, and also making it slow as shit and heavy as hell. Yes. Uh, and it's also considered a combat vehicle. Pardon me, a combat, not a I combat. Like, I like how the civilians even are clowning on the Humvee. They're putting it in quotations. It's a yeah. combat vehicle. <laughs> yeah, sure, Jan. Mm. Uh, the vehicle is worth $120,000. No, that's no way. a lie. Lie. <laughs> There's no shot they could sell that thing for more than five grand. None. <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. And there's a potential. Unless it's somebody like Bam Margera. Yeah, I mean, there's absolute. I, these things are are so old. They're like shells of them former selves. They break down twenty four seven. They're just nightmare fuel. Uh, there's a potential ten grand reward for its return. Stealing it carries a penalty of up to ten years in prison. Less than two weeks after far right extremists attacked the U.S. Capitol, with rumors circulating of other possible attacks, the theft of such a vehicle is getting attention on social media. I promise you, you have nothing to fear with someone stealing this Humvee. No, uh, you know like they just, I go so slow, just throw out some spike strips and you're good. <laughs> right. It'll, it'll I, be uh, on the side of the highway soon. I really need to just speak up and say something. And I, otherwise, I like this gentleman. He's very entertaining. But I blame Arnold Schwarzenegger, okay? Because mm. when he turned around and he was the first one to have a commercial Humvee, and made it look really cool. That put it into the little brains of all these weirdos. Oh, I need to get myself a Humvee. And now you have people stealing Humvees. Well, so, let's talk about this. How did we feel about H2s and H3s when they came out? I felt like you were immediately, anytime I saw one on the road, I would think douchebag. Nope, oh, this person's a douchebag. This person's compensating for something. Like there's absolutely God. nothing cool. Well, I, if I'm if my timing's correct, they came out before I was in the military. So at that mm -hmm. point, I still thought, oh, that's pretty cool to have one of those. <laughs> Little did I know, I, I would learn soon enough that that's not actually cool. But also, too, those H2s and H3s, like we're so jaded, they're very different. With the exception of the body style, the inside is you're not you're not crammed up with your knees and your chest, you know. And mm -hmm. and the air conditioning presumably works in those, but uh. Very different. For me, the H3, I'm out on it. That's basically like a shittier version of a Tahoe. Yeah. I don't want the H3. The H2. Mm. <laughs> you start, you offer me an H2. I'll probably drive that bad boy around. They're just so huge. It's ridiculous. Like anywhere, like you're always so cramped up in cars. An H2, you're not getting crammed up in that thing. Mm. I did go to a dealership once, a Hummer dealership with my dad, when we were shopping for my 2000 Hyundai Sonata back Ooh. in California. He came out to visit and we were driving through this area with all the car lots and we were like, just for fun, let's stop and check them out. They are kind of cool. I'm not going to lie inside. Yeah, see, change your tune. It all just takes right. one person to be like, yes, I'm brave <laughs> enough to admit that H2 is kind of cool and everybody yeah. else gets on. Like if I pulled up, let's say you're out with the girls, Kate, you're down at the your, it's Jersey Pocket Shore books. time. You're down there. You've already dropped your pocketbooks. Mm -hmm. You're having a great time. You're in there. You're drinking some picklebacks. You're doing all kinds of things with the ladies, ripping heaters and all that. Next thing you know, you're calling an Uber to get back to the place. An H2 shows up. Mm -hmm. And all the ladies are like, oh, my God, an H2 Hama. I'm going to get in. This is Frank's not going to believe this. Oh, we're squealing. We're oh, just yeah. squealing as that thing pulled up. We're like, oh, my God. Yeah, what a treat. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right. You're right. So yeah. we also asked the social media followers what they would do if they had stole it. And one of the first answers that we got, put a baby seat in it and give it to Kate. And <laughs> somebody even found a photo of one with a baby seat in the back. And it looks like a military one. Uh -huh. Like it looks like a military one. Someone transferred over and put a baby seat in there. I can see it. Safety ratings got to be. I was going to say those things. I mean, you know, short of hitting an IED, God forbid, uh, I, I'd imagine they're pretty safe in terms of if you get hit by another vehicle, the other vehicle would probably just bounce off of it. The real yeah, that's problem. what I really liked about my old truck too. Like my truck had been hit so many times and it had like reinforced bumpers and shit like that. Yeah. And nothing happened to it. When I was in college and these people couldn't drive, they would run into the back and their brand new bumpers would be all smashed and my truck was none the wiser. I had like a little gray paint mark and that's it. 
the real problem with that for me would be the Wawa parking lot, which is a zoo. Mm. And it wouldn't be the danger of getting in a fender bender or something. It'd be after I got out of the vehicle and, and some other woman punching me in the face because I've created some sort of traffic jam. Yeah. And uh, it would be awkward for you always having to go pick up a ground guide before you went to Wawa. And moving the chalk blocks out of the way. Forget it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the next answer was turn it back in for the reward money because those things stink. I think that's the most accurate answer. If uh, Anybody who wants to steal one has never actually ridden one. Uh, mm -hmm. Ron Texaco said, take up two sparking spots at a crowded mall. I think everybody <laughs> could agree there. Nobody would be able to do anything about it. Local curmudgeon said, get in, losers. We're going insurrecting. <laughs> yeah. Um, then we also have Sergeant Space Sergeant said, double park in the CO and Sergeant Major's parking spot. Ooh, that's A ballsy. bold move. Yeah. Um, then John said, doing hood rats with his shit with his friends and breaking down outside the gate was another answer. Probably be an Uber. I think if you were an Uber, if you were the Uber Humvee guy, I think people would like that. You'd get, yeah, you'd certainly get a reputation. And honestly, yeah, because it, like we said, people think it's cool until they get in and they realize this stinks. If you kept it hyper local, like Pacific Beach, and you were known as the Humvee booze yeah. vehicle and like you just did like a 10 block radius dropping people off and shit i'm sure people would love it um i love this one by adrian x uh sell to one of those neck beard militiamen those suckers would do anything for military shit i i feel like i should start selling military shit to neck bearded militiamen i feel like i can make a killing you could. um and i think or a small town police department they'll buy it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh. absolutely um we also went to, and then there's the other side, what you would do and then what should happen to the person. This is where I really believe like punishment wise, there's no one more creative than young corporals and sergeants who get the ability to put some creative corrections on junior troops who do shit like this. Some of these answers are just perfect. Uh, Gal Staff Sorcerer of Light <laughs> said, the platoon second lieutenant gets questioned about it and replies with, it's my first day. The entire <laughs> IG board laughs, upgrades the incident to either a ZBT segment where Kate can relate. Cons House sometimes tries it back to West Point football. And Chaps slashes out at the perpetrators with still a smoldering fury of having his POV stolen. Or becomes a U.S. Army What the Fuck Moments article where the comment section devolves into an instant dumpster fire of salty salt after salty salt trying to come up one up each other with sore tales of being a reservist in 1995 and someone leaving a loaded M9 in a golden corral bathroom because they were trying to make more room for the all you can eat steak night and forgot to turn it in at the armory. Wait, what were we talking about again? <laughs> yes. A thousand points to go, Steph. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's spot on. Absolutely. Uh -huh. Um what would happen? I I don't know what would happen, but I would, would say I'm not worried about somebody having stole it for the insurrection because again, it will never make it where it's going. Mm. Um, but do I think it's a military person? Like, do I think it's someone from that base late night smoke pit booze goofing? When you start daring each other to do shit, it escalates so quick. Yeah. And also I, I think it's I military know. because I, unless you're just really familiar with Humvees, I don't think people realize that you don't need keys. Most people would just think I can't steal that because I don't know how to hot yeah, wire a car. Yeah, if you didn't have even like the cursory knowledge of a Humvee, I don't think knowing what the switches look like, I don't think you would just automatically know to hop in that and that's how it starts. Yeah. Yeah, so it's got to be. I can't mm -hmm. imagine they won't find this very soon and the person who did it very soon. The um, next one up is Prince of Wills. He said, in my country, you lose a Humvee, believe it or not, jail. Straight to jail. <laughs> Uh, uh, MF Brown 28 fully disassemble and reassemble a Humvee as extra duty till it's done. And the way the Fonz had to do it when he went temporarily blind in that one episode and to get him back on his feet, they made him do it blind. Like he couldn't see and he had to reassemble his motorcycle. <laughs> Rocco Patel said, you have to listen to Captain Khan's talk about West Point football. That mm, might be a little over. That's harsh. That's yeah, not. That's uh, really uh, harsh. Uh, uh, that, that wasn't necessary. Mm -hmm. CBZ Media said you have to build a new one with Legos. I actually think that's a great punishment. Like if you tell somebody, look, you don't have to go to the brig. We realize that you're doing a little drunk goofing. We're going to get you a shit ton of Legos. When you build a life-size thing of Legos, you'll be done. And you get put on legal hold. You can't, know, you can't pick up rank. You can't do any of that stuff. 
You stay your rank until you complete the Humvee made of Legos. But every piece you get assembled, you have to jump into the pile and do one burpee with no shoes on. Ooh, that's that would stink. While, okay? Yeah, mm -hmm. but also it hurt because you're on the Legos. <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then this final one is so great. Uh, he says, carry a life size cardboard cutout of it until you find the real one. <laughs> a life size cardboard Humvee cutout. That's yeah. perfect. Dragging it through the chow hall to get your chow. Yeah. Yeah. Where's your fucking cardboard? All right. That's it for that round. Let's move on to round number two, which comes to us from the National Guard in Puerto Rico. When I went to, uh, I was surprised when I went to boot camp because we had. In my platoon, we had, I think, six, five or six people that were from Puerto Rico. And at that time, I didn't know that I didn't know that you could join the U.S. military and like go from Puerto Rico and straight into boot camp. And then here at Lackland, they actually have the Language Institute where a shit ton of the National Guard folks who are in the Puerto Rican National Guard come here to learn English before they go out to the regular army. Pretty cool that they have like that pipeline going on. So we have a round from the motivator who is in charge of the Puerto Rican National Guard, who's actually coming up to DC to help with the inauguration. Here's that commander motivating his troops. La filosofía de ellos es de nacionalista y un grupo cuyos colores típicamente se visten en amarillo y negro. Ese grupo se conoce como los Proud Boys o los chicos orgullosos. Así que el líder es una persona de descendencia latina, el descendiente cubano. La persona que es el líder de ellos se llama Enrique Tarrios. Quiere decir que hay personas que van a estar allí y ellos han dicho que no van a estar vistiendo los colores amarillos y negros. Van a estar vistiendo civil como ustedes. Si hablan español, usted no confíe. No es el momento de confiar de nadie. Es el momento de ustedes velar por sus compañeros. Ustedes saben que utilizamos el sistema del body system. Necesitamos que usted vele por el compañero que se le asigna en ese sistema de body system. La temperatura está fría en Washington, D.C. A todo el mundo se le dio cold weather gear. Todo el mundo. Si usted necesita equipo adicional, no lo piense dos veces. Pídalo a su liderato. ¿Alguno de ustedes ha estado en este tipo de actividad anteriormente? Mire a su izquierda y derecha. Den las manos en alto, por favor. Mire a su izquierda y derecha. Pregúntele a esa persona cómo es la actividad. ¿Ok? Gracias. En el pasado, la actividad de toma de posesión del, del presidente Trump solamente fueron 10.000 guardias nacionales. That fires me the fuck up. I mean, yeah. any, like you have that kind of speech. I don't know how you just aren't ready to run through a wall beautiful and beautifully said too i think it's something that we could all relate to right away from the very first sentence and that i don't know it just really resonated deeply probably resonated with most of our listeners so very it was, cool i mean it was definitely is one of those speeches where the hairs on the back of your neck stand up because it's mm -hmm. just really just coursing through your blood and every word is just getting you motivated unbelievable to have Absolutely. that command like in in such a way it's just so impressive mm -hmm. now i will say i was a little like okay this is probably not the best example because we do need to lead from the front he didn't have his mask on when he was talking to mm -hmm. all his troops with his with the mask on i think right. you have to make that but in that type of speech that you he probably knows at that point when he's given that speech that it's going to go viral because just because how fired up he is and he wants his face out there doesn't want it covered up so i kind of understand that too yeah, mm. if, I think we can all forgive him for the content that was in the speech alone. Yeah, said. Exactly um, right. I might. I'll say, I, oh, sorry, Cons, but in Afghanistan on my second tour, 
we served, we were in this like uh, plywood building, office building of sorts, I guess, like a ramshackle. But the across from us, from physical security, was the Puerto Rican National Guard. Was That was their hub. And it was the first time I had encountered, because this was the first time too, I had worked with a bunch of other branches all together that weren't Marines. But I was like, oh sh shit, like I, I felt ignorant for not having known the Puerto Rican National Guard and military has like super long tradition of serving our country, which is crazy to me because they're not entitled to like voting representation. Mm -hmm. They don't have, like, they can't vote. They're not entitled to electoral votes for president. They're not entitled to, but yet they serve our country and deploy and do all these things. So I've, show up in all types of like hurricane relief and disaster and yep. shit like that. It is legitimately crazy that they, and they get a lot of the benefits from being like a so, so closely associated to the United States. It's weird that they're not a state. Like it's weird. I guess they mm -hmm. don't want to too. Like there's part of it that they don't want to be a state too. Yeah. They're like, yeah, we're all set on that. I, I think they're kind of like somewhat of the best of both worlds in, in a lot of ways. So the last couple of weeks they're like, yeah, we're good. <laughs> yeah, we're all, we're set. all right. <laughs> I think they got to make DC a state too, because they should have representation in the Senate. Yeah. Hmm. All right. <laughs> <laughs> or you could just wear some bare bottom clothing. It's your go-to most versatile, comfortable, wearable, everyday clothing. I got to tell you. So I wore the, they're like joggers, I guess, like a light colored jogger that they sent here to the house. And I, my older kid was spending the night at a friend's house and I went to go pick her up and to the phone. And she was like, whoa those are cool pants and i was like from a teen mm -hmm. from a teen i get that compliment i'm sorry uh, just just real quickly you said i knocked on the door and she answered the phone oh she answered the door yeah that's what she did she answered the door uh it said that i look cool i had a teen say i look cool because they're built for value <laughs> they're comfortable they're made to last shorts or pants or tees or whatever that whatever you buy they also have flannels that are unbelievably thick and luxurious you know you get some flannels and you feel it and you're like oh this is going to shrink in the washer and dryer there's mm -hmm. no doubt about it this doesn't have that feel at all it feels like it's high quality stuff make sure you go to barebottomclothing.com you're going to get free shipping with the promo code zero make sure you use that promo code zero to get free shipping when you go to barebottomclothing.com very comfortable very stylish very handsome very cool very 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 bottom pants <laughs> oh, yeah. you no. know me i gotta jump on i can never let you finish your ads without jumping on yeah i feel like the jogger pants mm -hmm. is a style that if you're kind of uh, i normally stick to just the plain old plain old it's kind of intimidating to jump into that style to dip your toe in that style it's like me when i started wearing hats it was a big deal for i was like i'm gonna start wearing hats i don't Whoa. you dip your toe in and then next uh -huh. thing you know you're wearing them all the time uh -huh. you love them you're heading um, down the, to the haberdashery <laughs> heading down to the haberdashery but like <laughs> the those jogger pants are the perfect they're not they don't like overdo it with the jogger pants style they're like the perfect I don't know. I just feel like they're, they're the like perfect. They're like the Moscato of stylish bottoms for men. Yes. I feel like anybody, literally anybody could put those on and I wouldn't be like, whoa, you're wearing jogger pants. Like I'd be like, yeah, that looks really good on you. I don't know. Mm. I've just noticed that from the guys wearing these pants around the office. Yeah. When you, uh, you sent me a picture of your dad, who's uh, inching close to 70 and he was, he was doing it. Crushing the, yes, indeed he was. Very yeah, cool. He's out there. He's absolutely crushing it. <laughs> Let's move on to round number three. What do we got, Kate? What do we got, you ask? Uh, so <clears throat> this is mm. we're doing a little question and answer here. Mm -hmm. And you can count I on I like us. this segment, which we still do not have a name for, but as soon as we do, I'm going to like you do more. I think school circle on me. Yeah, school circle okay. on me. Have I served recently? No, but I'll give you <laughs> the best possible answer. Right. Uh, question number one. I'm an air guardsman who is planning on getting LASIK eye surgery just before a drill date, meaning I would not be able to attend that drill. Not my direct supervisor, but someone who outranks me says that I might not be able to skip make up that drill due to a gray area in the policy. I'm prior service army and the policy doesn't account for making up drill dates for prior service. If I can't attend this LASIK surgery, I will have to wait towards the end of the year before another window opens again. 
Furthermore, this surgery isn't just a quality of life issue for me. I have more than minor issues with contact lenses and glasses. If this supervisor says that I am required to attend this drill, I am prepared to climb the chain of command to fight it. I'm curious to hear the community's thoughts on this. I think of myself as a respectful person when addressing rank. However, I have to challenge rank in the past uh, over a more serious issue. Um, so basically I'll do One, it again. The first thing I want to address is this kid, whoever it is, absolutely smashes the uses of a semicolon, did it correctly um, throughout this entire message, which is just inspiring that junior troops are learning how to use semicolons. Shout out to all those NCOs out there that are taking their mentorship uh, very seriously secondly i would say this is like i don't understand the guard like <laughs> the way that it works because i i feel like this situation is some sergeant maybe maybe a staff sergeant telling a junior troop something that they heard along the way and mm -hmm. acting as if it's gospel this is not gospel it's a medical surgery that is deemed medically necessary there is no shot anyone who's actually in your chain of command is like, no, don't do this. Yeah. None. And if it's really that important, uh, coming from someone who's had LASIK surgery, you could go do stuff basically right away. You you could you could definitely, I'm sure that, the, I, I forget specifically, I'm sure they tell you, hey, you need to rest for a few days and what have you, but you're not going to hurt the surgery if you go out and do stuff. So if you really absolutely cannot miss drill, you can do both, but do not, do not pass up on the surgery because it is life-changing and awesome. Yeah. Any leader who's not a moron, even if they still made you come to drill, would be like, just hang out and take it easy for this. Yeah. Drill. Once just you like get there and you have a boat that you just had surgery, it's not like they're going to make you jump into a mud pit. Yeah, also, I can see this is so military being like, no, you absolutely cannot skip this drill. The person skips the drill and then they just are throwing rocks at a can for two days. And, and aren't they basically, unless they're helping out in DC, aren't they just kind of like hanging out on Zoom anyway? Exactly. Yeah. Like, so I, yeah, I, if I was this person, I would absolutely, if the person above me is not budging, I would absolutely skip chain of command for this one. Cause I think any, once you finally hit the first person who wasn't a moron, they would come up with a solution that works for you. Additionally, yeah. I had, I can't believe I didn't bring this up. A few months ago, it just flashed into my brain. Somebody told me that they were a reservist and they were going through like the process of um, doing a drill over Zoom or whatever. And one of the things that they were doing is they have mandatory training at all these guard meetings that they do, um, which makes sense. Like if you only go once a month, you have a lot of training to knock out and they're doing it on Zoom. This person told me that they started to wiggle the USB wire for their webcam like every five minutes or so they would wiggle it so the feed would like go in and out and in and out like their feed and then eventually they did it so often and then they just pulled it out where the camera went out and so everybody believed them that their <laughs> webcam broke and then they just were like chilling on the couch eating cheetos and shit during zoom because oh, they're brilliant <laughs> because their webcam broke and nobody could say otherwise. You'd believe There's, it. I mean, you'd believe that. That's a that's very tricky. Yeah, because it also, unless you're just a super duper computer person, who are you to say no? That's wrong. Mm -hmm. like, okay. I have a cousin who it's not National Guard, but a lot of companies too will keep track of. They can see just as long as there's some sort of mouse activity on your work computer. Yeah. And so, um, taking the fans that rotate back and forth, attaching your <laughs> mouse to it. And then your mouse just kind of moves all day long and you nobody so much work where it's, you, you can just do your own work. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I don't understand. Like you're working so hard to act like you're working next one up. This one is something that absolutely blew my mind when I read it. This guy, the fucking finish, man. I like the, I like my friends, the Finns, you know, that Kate, we talk about that on radio constantly. Finland, I love the Finnish male. big Finland guy. <laughs> it says I'm a 19 year old Finnish male who's currently serving in the Finnish army. We have a military conscription. So uh, service is not an option. I feel like I'm mentally and physically broken and have been here for only two weeks. I have to do this for six to 12 months. Do you have any tips on how to manage the service for over 10 to serve for over 10 hours a day? Oh my God. Suck it up, dude. Yeah, <laughs> like, suck it oh up. my God. Let's suck go. it up. Oh my God. Just keep, keep telling yourself, you know what song I sang to myself in boot camp, and it worked. 
What? What? If you're going through hell, keep on moving. Don't slow down. If you're oh scared, just God. do it. You might get out before the devil even knows you're there. So that was the song that you would sing to yourself? I, Because I would do that too whenever <laughs> I'm like hiking or doing a hump or something. I would always have like a song going on in my head. But at the time that I went, it was definitely Smooth by Rob Thomas. And oh. Off the out, the Grammy and nominated album supernatural absolutely it was that and build me up buttercup when i was doing the bar hang but i'm just saying you you shut dude i you learn to just shut your mind off put a dumb song in your head keep nodding and saying yes ma'am no ma'am whatever and next thing you know six months is up the band-aid's been ripped off and you're free it's so much easier to just stick with it and knock it out than to drag your feet and fight it and whatever um obviously it's if you're having finland that's so hard I don't know. Well, it's cold. I'll give him this. It's cold. I hate so cold. what? I you know what? No, yeah, I'm tired of people. Gone. I'm tired of people mm. complaining. Oh, oh, I'm too cold. Put on a jacket. Mm. Oh, oh, I'm too hot. Drink water. I don't care. Everybody deals with it. Stop complaining. You know what it might be? Maybe all the other males in his unit have that long Viking hair and are total smoke shows, and he's got thin. Like something's not, he's not getting the same hot Finnish military look. Yeah, he must, you know be, what, a, though? He must be an uggo. Yeah. No. Probably, yeah. But also, this is ridiculous. He's like, I have to do this for six months to 12 months. Uh, a, a year? Six months? Like, yeah. Who you cares? That's bad. The dudes from BTS, the boy bands, they have to do it for two years and they're famous as fuck. Yeah. So I don't yeah. want to hear about it, Finland guy. And yeah. also, it's not even that cold in Finland right now. I just looked it up. It's only 25 degrees in Helsinki right now. Ooh. Mm. It's like all dark there in the Like winter. if you're talking negative 25, it'd be like, okay, that's cold. 25 degrees. That's lovely to do some mountain climbers in. Hooked up with a Finnish exchange student in college. Did you? Anton, like? wherever you are. Anton, yeah. Nice. Horrible acne, but he ha- he was foreign. So I was like, let's find Acne or back knee? Well, a little bit of both. Oh, we all... The old double play. <laughs> yeah, it was the accent. I don't know. It got me. All right. What's Barely the next spoke one, English. Oh, uh, we didn't give any advice. Oh, suck it up. That's the advice. Suck it yeah, up. Yeah, suck it up. Stop <laughs> complaining. Yeah. yeah. Uh, hey, guys. Long time I'm sorry. Long. Seriously, though, when was the last time Finland did anything for anybody? Don't say that. No, it's been a long time. <laughs> yeah. It's been a long time. I don't know what their role is. They probably have like six people deployed somewhere. Like six people went to like Molly or something like that a couple of years ago. And that's what they count as their war on terror goofing. Yeah. Maybe like two folks went to Indonesia. Cons, I hope you're on one of your little dude bro ski trips somewhere and <laughs> you accidentally go, you don't die. You go off a bit of a cliff. You're hanging on. Here comes super hot Finland guy on vacation. He's in the military. He's heard this episode. Does he reach down for you? I don't know. That's your fault if he doesn't. Mm-hmm. Something to think about. What if you're on, like, if you are sitting there and you're talking with somebody, like, at, you're at your American Legion post in uh, Hoboken, cons, some Finnish dude comes in and he starts talking about his deployment, gets all teary-eyed because one spot that he was at, they ran out of dull whips. Right. <laughs> Well, if either of those things happens, then I'll eat crow and I'll apologize. Or um, if any, then you guys get drunk, he beats you up and you're like, please no more. And he's like, finish. I'm only getting started. That's a porno too, I think. Oh my God. Absolutely. Absolutely it is. <laughs> Butthole porn. Shout out Anton. Yes. Great guy. Gate. Mm, Helsinki. Oh. All right, number three. Hey, guys, long-time listeners. So I just wondered if you could tell me if this fellow was having a normal day or not. Also, should we thank him for his service? This one's actually an audio clip. Let's give it a listen. Our country's worth fighting for every day until this election is over and Donald J. Trump is put back in that White House 100% indefinitely. Man, this isn't just a fight for Donald Trump. This is a fight of good versus evil, right versus wrong. I love my country. I had to tell my son before I left home, listen, son, I'm doing this for you. Daddy may not come home, but that's okay. I'll stand in the gap so he doesn't have to, so your kids don't have to. I'll take whatever comes. I love that guy. (laughs) He is so, he is about to cry. 
if you got to see this clip, we'll put it out on social media too. This guy was about to cry. He was standing there saying that he was going to stand in the gap for his son. I'm like, dude, you're just at the Capitol building storming. it. You're not standing in any gap at all. <laughs> Weirdos. That's my only comment. Okay, let's go on to the next one. We don't have a next one. Next one is round number four. Uh, this this dude. This I dude's love a this fucking guy. beast. Me He's too. A, this guy is a legitimate like James Bond of Russia. Yeah. He's absolutely, I, I, we covered this story on CBT before. Basically he's running, he was running opposition to Putin, calling out Putin for all this different shit. And next thing you know, he gets poisoned and he almost dies and no shit. It comes out that he tricks them on the phone himself into admitting it was, it was Putin's cronies. Uh, and so now, and this video was like viral worldwide. I think like the, the first clip that came out about it has like 20 million views on Twitter, which is an insane amount of, that's like average views on TikTok. That's insane amount of views on Twitter to have. But he he decided to go back to Russia, which mm -hmm. is, I don't know how you make that decision. Like when the KGB is legitimately like, you're a wanted man, you're going to jail as soon as you get back here, hops on a plane from Berlin, goes back, and then just has balls of steel while he was yeah. there so he flies into the russian airport and he is immediately arrested as soon as he lands there they re they relocated his main flight so i imagine he had time to prepare his mentals and his chickens whenever he was diverted like when they come over and say you're getting diverted he knew where he was at but they said that he could serve his three and a half year sentence behind bars. He is President Putin's most prominent and determined foe, but he brushed <laughs> off concerns about his arrest as he boarded the plane in Berlin. So this is even when he's just getting on the plane. He said, it's impossible. I'm an innocent man. What could they possibly do to me? And he's just, he's just almost mocking the process. I don't feel like Russian jails are a joke. No, and this is, again, this is coming right after five months of recovering from a nerve agent poisoning him that he has proof it was the Kremlin. Where it and, almost killed him several times. Right, and um, and he knew he was going to get arrested. Russia back in, because also, too, if you're opposing them, if they don't kill you, they'll accuse you of some sort of crime. Mm -hmm. In his case, it was an embezzlement conviction, which odds are good. It was a suspended sentence on a 2014 embezzlement conviction. Um, and they're saying he violated parole. What are the odds he was actually embezzling? Very low. What are the odds right. any of his crimes are legit? Very low. Um, so he's going to be held in custody until the court rules on his case. Knowing Russia, they could be like, well, looks like your trial's not for 10 years, dickhead. Um, so who knows? But this is Alexei Navalny is the man's name. Obviously, I feel like we haven't said his name yet. Um, but Navalny's 44. He's President Putin's most his biggest foe he clowned the shit out of him um and people are saying this is such a huge act of bravery and, and i can see this being one of those things like almost like he's sacrificing himself in a way because the people this will inspire this will inspire the fuck out of people between and this guy think, and pussy riot <laughs> yeah totally and he doesn't have a cool hat mm -hmm. but uh but tons of supporters went to the airport where his flight was scheduled to land even though it was diverted um and I think this will this will be one of those things that like starts to turn even more people. Yeah, Not like where this. you have like this idea. I think you have some delusions of grandeur that are going on around the Capitol with all these protests where you think that you're going to be starting a revolution. This guy is the type of guy who legitimately could start like a Russian revolution because he's he's so brazen. And I try to think like if if I was in this position and all of this stuff, and they started to do all this stuff to me, like trying to poison me. And even earlier than that, he had been jailed repeatedly in connection with protests and has twice been convicted of financial misdeeds. He also suffered significant eye damage when an assailant threw disinfectant into his face when he was taken from a jail hospital in 2019 with an illness that they said was an allergic reaction. And that was before the poisoning happened. So he has all this stuff going on. Do you think it would make you be like, okay, well, what's the fucking worst thing that can happen now? Where you would be like, I'm not going to give in. Yeah, he's just obviously wired differently for that exact reason, chaps. Okay, I've taken all this. At this point, the worst thing that could happen is he dies. 
And he's already kind of, in my opinion, cheated death seemingly a few times. And he's standing toe to toe with Putin. And, you know, Russia has some secret people that aren't in the news that are never talked about. You don't know their names that just show up in your house and make you disappear. So he's standing toe to toe with those people, too, and seemingly just spitting in their faces, not giving a care. He's got to have almost like a film crew Kardashian style around him, right? Where everywhere he goes, he's on camera just in case something like that happens. They have a little bit of proof. You would imagine he lives on film 24-7 right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah. The only problem is if he doesn't have a good torso and and like dad tits, but like mm. Putin style, like I feel like to be king in Russia, you got to have a better a better dad bod. Like I can't Alex see that Jones guy after a couple bowls of chili. Exactly. I can't see this guy riding a horse in a frozen Russian river. So I'm having a little trouble uh, seeing beyond where he's that at. That being said, have you guys ever seen the documentary series called Iceman? No. It's this dude who bills himself to be the world's most invincible man. And he's trained himself by living almost in the Arctic where he'll go out and just hang out in cold ass water every day. And like freezing cold water where people get into it. There was an, another dude that got into it and he went into the water with him for like three minutes. And the guy had like hypothermia and this dude just hangs out for like an hour and a half, two hours in this cold ass water and has trained himself to be essentially invincible to the cold. Like he'll just walk around outside in a blizzard with nothing else on. Well, if he oh, becomes that cool. guy, he's got more of a shot. But as for now, I don't know. And I I was Googling, too, what Russians think of Navalny. And it's kind of a mixed bag. It's difficult for him to get much of a foothold because from what I'm reading, I don't know if it's true, he can't even officially register. Like, it's so difficult to do anything, to even register to become, like, part of his official party or to actually run for anything or to whatever. And they, he actually can't. And that was one of the reasons right. why they convicted him in 2014 so he wouldn't be able to legally be on the Russian ballot. So right before he was going to do a president, you remember, I believe it was in 2014 where the policy in Russia had changed, where Putin was basically going to be a lifetime president, where they had changed the rules where he could be in charge forever. And right before that election took place is when they gave him this first felony charge where he was no longer eligible to even run for office there. She yeah. Shady, shady, shady. And there's also theories that he's being backed and pushed um, and supported by other governments who are oh, against I Russia. I mean, for sure there is. Like, I'm sure he has some protection of some sort from other uh -huh. go governments. But then I saw another theory that he's uh -huh. actually backed by Putin's people to split Whoa. any other opposition parties, but I Double don't think they would have poisoned him if that was the case. So this is going to make a or great a Netflix light series light one day. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. A little bit of light poisoning. A lot to think about. A lot to think about. There's more to think about in round number five. This story, bonkers. This story might be the most, have the most twists and turns of any military story I've read in a while. Kate, start walking us through this one. All right. Uh, let's see. First of all, the way Chaps introed this at the top of the show, you would think this fellow was all bad. Wrong. He's not. Listen to the primer. And again, Chaps introed this at round number five. He said, in a story that should be the poster child for good initiative, bad judgment, a former old army soldier arrested for inciting violence in Tallahassee. Okay, so that sounds bad. Chaps is saying in round number five, is it? It might not be all that bad. Uh, well, his landlord is the one that first st stood up and she talked to somebody with the Tallahassee Democrat, which as we all know, that's the local paper there in Tallahassee, which delivers Tallahassee local news. Susanna Matthews said that he was a model tenant, that this guy, Daniel Baker, is a model tenant. And he's lived there since October. She said he was a joy, very intelligent, very well-read and well-spoken, considerate of others who live here, quiet, well-behaved, paid his rent on time. What else can I really say? Matthews, this is the woman who is 80 years old and blind, was stunned when the FBI agents with guns drawn descended Friday morning on the brick apartment building her parents built in the 1960s. She was in her office right next door to Baker's apartment when agents arrived at around 8.30 a.m. So imagine it's 8.30 a.m. You have all this stuff, crazy shit going on in the news. You're 80 years old. You're fucking blind. <laughs> you can't see what's going on. The only thing you hear is federal agents storming. Nice guy. It goes on to say, a man knocked on her door saying that there was a delivery. Matthews cracked her head open but got startled and slammed it shut, prompting the man to shout, FBI. So unsure what was happening, she called 911 four times. 
That's somebody who is very nervous. If you're calling 911 four times, she's very nervous. She went on to say, the FBI scared the hell out of me. It seems like a strange way to run a, a railroad. I guess everybody's on high alert. Had you guys ever heard that phrase? It's a strange way to run a railroad? No, no I've actually never, never heard, heard that. that before. Yeah, I looked it up. And it is a second reference. It has a little more information. The phrase is sometimes, quote, it's a hell of a way to run a railroad. This catchphrase is directed at more mostly organized chaos. It's from a cartoon that first appeared in the 1920s. So a big time um, flashback drawback from old. Dorothy. Wait, so why, why is the FBI there, though? What The FBI is raiding this old lady's apartment complex. Why? Here we go. Oh. Apparently, and it ended pretty amic amicably, uh, Matthew said. I heard them out there laughing and joking, but the tenants and the FBI people. Matthew describes Baker, the guy that who got arrested, as kind and contentious man. This is all very shocking. After everybody left, his roommate said that he was very calm, and Baker had apparently been on the internet and said something that caught their attention. She got glowing recommendations from about Baker from past landlords and his employers, and he helped her bring in groceries to take out the trash, she said. He also volunteered for the homeless and other causes, taught yoga, and appeared very mild manner. However, during interviews with the FBI, here we go. This is where we start to see why he was actually arrested. Baker admitted to training members who attended the YPG International Academy on military defensive tactics. It says, multiple overseas sources reported that Baker stated he intended to return to the United States with the intention to lure tourist pilots training on the United States military bases off the installation, after which he would kill or mutilate them to furtherance of the helping the YPG fight the Turkish government, court documents said. Daniel Baker got kicked out of the army for going AWOL a few years ago. Then years later, he traveled to Syria to fight against ISIS militants alongside the Kurdish military. He's now under arrest in Florida for allegedly inciting violence to, in his bid to, quote, defend Tallahassee from supporters of President Donald Trump. And these are just the top level details. The Justice Department actually released the statement. Here's that statement from the Justice Department. Federal law enforcement is constantly monitoring for threats to public safety, particularly in light of the social and political turmoil of the past several months. As a result, this morning, FBI agents arrested Daniel Baker of Tallahassee. Evidence shows that through various methods of interstate communications, Baker threatened to kidnap and injure others, and he recently issued a call to arms for like-minded individuals to violently confront protesters who are expected to gather at the Florida Capitol. Extremists intent on violence from either end of the political and social spectrums must be stopped, and they will be stopped. The diligent work in this case by the FBI and our state and local partners has averted a crisis with this arrest, and we will not stop in our effort to detect, deter, and disrupt anyone else planning to incite or commit violence. This arrest serves as a message to anyone who intends to incite or commit violence in the Northern District of Florida, if you pose a threat to public safety, we will come for you. We will find you and we will prosecute you. Our investigation in this case will continue. We and our state and local partners will remain on high alert and we will take all appropriate actions against credible threats to the people of the Northern District of Florida. If you have information to report or if you see something suspicious, we ask that you contact either local law enforcement or the FBI at 1-800-CALL-FBI or 911 in case of emergency. So they gathered all this information about how he was telling people to rise up with arms. He was posting pictures with high ca capacity magazines with other posts saying he was actively attempting to purchase additional firearms within the last 24 hours. If convicted, he faces up to five years in federal prison and up to a $250,000 fine. So basically what they're saying that he did was he was trying to get a group together to capture those that were protesting around the state capitol building and he was going to essentially kill them. Baker enlisted in the Army and the Airborne Infantry in 2006, but he was later dishonorably discharged one year later for going AWOL ahead of his unit's deployment to Iraq. 
Following the removal of his service, he spent several years largely homeless and unemployed, residing in the Tallahassee area. He then traveled to Syria in 2017, where he joined the People's Protecting Units of YPG, a Kurdish military group fighting ISIS, and the YPG sub-affiliate of the Kurdish Workers' Party, which is designated by the United States government as a foreign terrorist organization. While in Syria, Baker was featured in a Vice News documentary, according to court filings. Imagine being like somebody who is a uh, veteran and you are thumbing through YouTube, you come across this vice thing. And then you, all of a sudden you see some dude that you were in boot camp with chilling in Syria, fighting the rebels. So, so he, so he got out of the military and then he was back and forth to Syria fighting on behalf of the Kurds. And now he's in Tallahassee wanting to overthrow the government. Basically, that's what happened. So that's why the story is so wild. He gets kicked out of the military. He ends up like doing his own thing for a few years, hopping back and forth from job to job. Next thing you know, in 2017, he ends up in Syria fighting against um, ISIS. He also claimed to be a trained sniper on social media, putting together all kinds of YouTube posts. His YouTube account is insane as well. He said, my first battle against ISIS in Syria, I killed many terrorists, rescued three vice reporters, and saved two wounded friends. On October 8th, 2020, the FBI received a tip that Baker was threatening the use of violence in the United States and using social media to recruit and train like-minded individuals in the furtherance of his anti-government, anti-authority, violent extremism ideology, according to the complaint. Many of Baker's threats, according to the complaint, were targeted at those who believe are white supremacists or fascists. And following his address or his arrest, Baker was remanded to the federal detention center where he told the judge, I'd like to get out of here after inauguration day. I would prefer whatever is safest for me. Uh, pal, you're not kidding now. Wait, so he, but he, so he, uh, this is very confusing because so this guy is saying, I'll commit violence against white supremacists and fascists, um, but I'm also anti government. He's this guy's a, he's a very complex man. I don't <laughs> fully understand what his deal is, but I believe he's, he's absolutely yoga. nuts. I feel like this is a guy that you, whenever you meet him at a bar, you're like, what the hell's going on with Frank? Like, this guy is an absolute wild card. 23 year old Kate not going home with this guy. I'm going to no, say it. I don't think you can go home with this fella. But Which is it, rare. It seems it was hard, really, even like for me, like reading these, like several different articles about it and putting it together because you think. What he said that he was trying to do until he got to the point where we we're going to take these people hostage, I was kind of on board. I was like, yeah, you go out there, you protect. You're almost like a counter protester. If people are getting rowdy, you could have like a group that stops them from getting so rowdy, maybe like assist the police and helping them do a little crowd control. I could see some veteran who thinks that they're like, the end all be all to security doing that type of thing like just reading and really uh, i can also own, i can also see the cops <laughs> cops being like no thanks bro get the yeah, fuck out of time. here dude like fucking like that's Daniel the last thing they need. Show up they're like we got it under control pal thanks we don't <laughs> yeah. we don't need you and then this is where daniel really lost me all right imagine there's a 17 second youtube video that you post First of all, if you post anything that's 17 seconds on YouTube, that's an automatic red flag. It mm -hmm. cannot be 17 seconds on YouTube. It's got to be longer than that. That 17 second, put that motherfucker on Instagram or Twitter or Snapchat or something, does not belong on YouTube. His only thing, his 17 second video was him printing out these flyers that say stop or protect um, Tallahassee. And it's just printing out these pages and he's just filming it with his phone. No talking, no nothing, just the filming of the printer printing out these flyers. That's probably, a crazy person he, move. He was probably very proud of that video too. Probably, but that's a crazy person move. Yes. It's a crazy person move. It's somebody spiraling who nobody stops. And like they said online, he's claiming to be a sniper and all these things that he wasn't as well. And I feel like people on the fringe though, they see that and they think that gives them street cred automatically. And so that feeds into their idea that they are somebody and they do, they are an operative, they are whatever. Like it just keeps getting weirder and weirder in this like little wacky militia world, whatever side you're on. Um, so yeah, this dude. Interesting yeah, I mean, there's fella. just so many, there's so many tentacles to this story that it's it very, really is. it's like, when you're trying to break it down and establish a timeline. It's almost impossible. Good luck to the justice department. Right. There's so many countries mentioned. There's so many different ideas he has and, and, and things he wants to accomplish. He's clearly mentally unstable. 
that I mean, that goes without saying. So does do does any part of you feel bad for him that he is dealing with some sort of mental health issue and potentially can't even get out of his own way? No, it seems I would like say, he's been crushing it. <laughs> I would say for, my answer for that type of thing is yes, I do feel bad that somebody is struggling that much mentally. Too, that doesn't mean that you're not going to face some type of culpability for your actions. Yeah, I, I, I think agree. there's still accountability, like get him the help that he needs, but there still also has to be some sort of accountability. Also, yes, no, I, I agree with you. Poor Susanna Matthews just being frightened by the FBI yeah. in her little apartment complex and her little uh, 80 and blind FBI knocking on her door. And now who's going to help her with her groceries? That's mm. there was. Um, you never know in all these apartment buildings, it's like a box of chocolates. And some of these chocolates are probably murdery. You know what I mean? Like in yeah, all these buildings we're living in. Jeffrey Dahmer's fucking neighbors. There was this great, I think it was on NPR, but it was a whole episode of something about people telling apartment stories. And the one guy was talking about his building super who would come and fix things in the building. And every now and then he'd run into the building super who was usually drunk. This guy was in his sixties. And when he was drunk, he would talk about being in this South American country. And, you know, I was a warlord down there and blah, blah, blah. And he's like, sure, Kevin. Yeah, absolutely. You were. Yeah. Uh huh. Um, Cause now the guy's like fixing wrenches and sinks and whatever. Well, a couple of years later, FBI raids the building. Turns out he was a warlord who was responsible for like 3,000 murders in like Jesus. Argentina or something. Like, and he was like, holy fuck, he wasn't lying when he was drunk. It's true. Like, I don't know, but you look around at your neighbors on when I lived in Astoria, there was these beautiful little houses on the park. And it was big news a few months ago. One of the buildings, one of the homeowners there in these like perfect little houses was building bombs in his apartment. Jeez. And they found like bombs in his fucking apartment, like real, real ass bombs I go on, right on the park where everybody's Not hanging out. Like, bombs, the real ones. You just never know. I'm saying, cause she's talking about like, he took out the trash and he was kind and he was mm -hmm. whatever. The moral of the story is trust nobody guys. The eyes on the back of your head. You don't know. Yeah, Osama bin Moralist. Laden played kickball with his kids in the fucking compound and was, <laughs> where right. Bob Neal shot him in the face. Like, right. I think even like exceedingly wicked people do some things that appear to be normal. And that last two minutes just proves how many true crime podcasts Kate really does listen to, which is incredible. Oh, for sure. Oh, I, yeah. think my, I think my favorite uh, true crime apartment story is Albert Fish. Do you guys know who Albert Fish is? No. no. Albert Fish is one of the most notorious serial killers in American history. And he looked like just a regular old dude that would probably spray down the cucumbers in the produce section at a grocery store. Just like a very lo normal looking dude. He moved into a new neighborhood and he would start scoping out like the people in the neighborhood. And eventually he would have like a big dinner, like a Sunday dinner for people to come over and eat like people in the neighborhood. And without fail, he would, un the, the, he would unknowingly to the other folks, feed them one of their neighbors in like a stew where he would Jesus. cook them like a stew. And when he was finally caught and arrested, whenever they did like the pat down, I think this happened in the 1930s, they found him to have 70 to 80 needles shoved through his testicles. And he would just walk around like that. What? Yeah. Albert fish. Yeah. That's kind of similar to uh, silence of the lambs. No, a little bit. Yeah. yeah. But he would like hit. <laughs> I mean, having some needles through your nutsack, no thanks. No. Mm -hmm. He would also drink urine, it says here. Yeah, big urine guy. Shout out to Red Grills. Hmm. <laughs> All right, let's move on to save rounds. Alibi, Kyle, we'll start with you. We are now putting up whole episodes on YouTube. That's the right. The whole episode. So go ahead, Kyle. find us on YouTube, check it out, subscribe do the thumbs up thing um it's i mean it's kind of fun if you don't if you only listen to like go back and see what people's faces actually look like mm -hmm. uh it's it's fun so yeah go check it out do all that stuff you know that's all i got there you go cons yeah. all right so i don't know if you guys saw it just recently uh you know peyton manning he does this series on this other network where he interviews random people and he interviewed President Clinton and it was actually up at West Point and they were talking about, he asked President Clinton, which, which presidents would be good on a football team. Uh, my buddy, Gerald Pete, Ford, the first answer. 
I forget what Clinton said, but uh, it should have been Gerald Ford. Clearly, is a national yeah. champion. Um, so, but my buddy Pete, who's been on the show before, he has actually sent me what he believes should be the starting lineup for the presidential football team. And if you'll indulge me, at left yeah. tackle, at uh, left tackle, we have Lyndon B. Johnson, six three and a half, two hundred, tall, lanky, room to grow into his body, Texas guy, knows football, willing to protect and fight, great locker room guy. Left mm-hmm. guard, Chester A. Arthur, 6'2", 224. Lawyer, smart, belongs in the O-line, stout, wide ass. Gerald Ford, center, 190, played position in college, enough said. Right guard, Bill Clinton, 6'2", 223, loves to eat, would play dirty. Arkansas Razorback, so he's already a hog. Perfect O-lineman. Right tackle, James Buchanan, 6'198", uh, running out of size, but he's got uh, – he's, he's a PA guy, so he's got to be tough. Wide receiver, Abe Lincoln, 6'4", 180, tall, lanky, athletic. Mm -hmm. Wide receiver, Thomas Jefferson, 6'2 174, young, from Virginia. Lots of athletes come from Virginia. Doesn't need the spotlight. Great compliment to Abe. Tight end, Washington, 6'2 180, reliable, versatile, not afraid to get dirty. Running back, Ike, enough said. Fullback, William McKinley, 5'7", 199, bowling ball through and through. Make fullbacks great again. Quarterback, George H.W. Bush, 6'2", 196, has the height and reach to see and throw over the line, played college baseball, great arm. Backup QB, JFK, glamorous, loves to party, maybe a little too much. All right. Yeah, Charlie De- Whitehurst. <laughs> Defense. Uh, D-end, Reagan, 6'1", 185, football experience, at least in the movies, will break through old lines like the Berlin Wall. D-tackle, tapped, 6'1", 340, Vince, War- Vince Wolfark written all over him. D tackle Grover Cleveland, 5'11, 260, Jersey guy, plays with heart, always coming back for more tenacious, moves better than Taft, but still plays the run. D end, James Monroe, six foot 189, tremendous toughness, survived bullet wound in Battle of Trenton, great motor. <laughs> Outside linebacker, James Garfield, six foot 184, Ohio guy, knows football, will make an enemy, smart. Middle linebacker, Teddy Roosevelt, 5'10, 210. Tough, pugnacious, can rouse the team to storm San Juan Hill. Outside linebacker, George W. Bush, 5'11 and a half, 191. Not the smartest, belongs on the defense. Uh, cornerback. I got to see him as a gunner. <laughs> yeah, yeah, absolutely. Just throw your body right, in, right into that freaking <laughs> yeah. wedge. Love it. Yo, watch this drive. <laughs> um, corner, James Polk, 5'8", 174, aggressive, can cover large spaces, open land, will take what he wants. Free safety, Obama, 6'1", 180, athletic, smart, can take charge of the coverage. Uh, strong safety, uh, Jackson, who is 6'1", 140, extremely mean, sounds like a safety to me. Uh, the other corner, we have Zachary Taylor, 5'8", 170, perfect compliment to Polk. War vet, tough and reliable, will help anyone. Punter, 5'4", uh, Madison, 5'4", 100 pounds, perfect size. See, I was going <laughs> to put him as a scat back. <laughs> And then finally, kicker, Grant, 5'8", 156. Not very athletic, but when the game is on the line, can be counted on to come in and win. Throws a hell of an after party. So there is your starting lineup for your presidential football team. There's a huge (laughs) snub. He left off FDR. That's just, come on. uh, eh, He's kind of had that polio thing. No women? No women on the team? Good point, Kate. (laughs) (laughs) Interesting. Hmm. All right, Kate, what about you? Uh, nothing. The baby's the size of a bushel of asparagus this week. Oh, the king of the vegetables. Hopefully not pointy head. And if oh. you're listening to this Tuesday morning, this is the final big ultrasound. Oh. Right? Yeah, so get to see all the little nooks and crannies and fingers and toes. And if he's if he's good looking or not, I don't know. Well, last time they said he was the most handsome baby they've ever seen. They di- so hopefully he's probably just only got more handsome, which is people say it's not possible. It's probably possible. So. Anyway, no, other than that, that's not, literally nothing else. Hmm. Cool. I don't really have anything either. But it was a, this is one of those weekends where it just felt right just to sit on the couch and watch football and not really move around a lot. It was lovely. Baby Dale's just been an absolute delight. Just loves just to Cute be around button. people. He, he was riding around yesterday when I was doing stuff in my yard, like picking up dog poop and stuff. I put him where he was inside the hood part of my hoodie. And he just was riding around back there, just like chilling, (laughs) looking at everything. He loves it. He's the best. Uh, That's all I really have. We'll be back here on Friday. It's on the retreat. 